Good morning. I'm Westchester County Executive George Latimer, and I'm very happy to be here in the town of North Castle, uh, in the hamlet of North White Plains, to uh, do something that's been long discussed, for which we're very happy that we have consensus on how to move forward and protect a piece of our history. This site, long before uh, more recent developments, was a historic site, the Elijah Miller House. It was part of a farm that dates back over 230 years and the family is a part of Westchester history. And it was in this site, uh, in this building, that General George Washington used it for a headquarters during the Battle of White Plains. That history is much greater than anything we do here in the immediacy of our current day. But all of us respect that history. And we respect the fact that great things happened in this house and in this county long before it became our authority and responsibility to protect that history. And what we're doing today is announcing that we have agreement between the town of North Castle and the county of Westchester through the leadership of Mike Shalero, the town supervisor, Margaret Kunzio, the county legislator for this area, uh, from the neighbors and the friends of uh, the Miller House, and from the neighbors who live in the North White Plains Hamlet, uh, and with the help and assistance of Assemblyman David Buckwald, who represents this area, that we've all come together to pr preserve, protect, and advance the Miller House for the years to come. Kathy O'Connor, who is here, is our Commissioner of Parks and Recreation, and Peter Tataglia, David DeLucia, their team, has put together a plan that will restore this house uh, to its, uh, its proper status, that will make sure that there is a facility here that school children can use to come and learn the history of America from this site, and that will have an acceptable area for people to park on what is otherwise a bit of a difficult road to park on, so that this house is not just restored, but it's available for people to touch American history in a direct way. The funding for this includes a grant made possible by Assemblyman David Buckwald. He'll speak to that in a few minutes. It involves money that has already been set aside and approved by the County Board of Legislators and additional funding by the county that we will put together. Uh, the total project we estimate to be slightly over $2 million. It is an, it is an affordable way for us to protect our history. This is a debt that we owe to our great-great-great-great-grandparents and our great-great-great-great-grandchildren. We have to be able to recognize the sacrifices they made that include this as part of our history, and we have to protect it for generations yet unborn. That is our responsibility today, and that is what these collective group of people, what we have together done by making this announcement. So I'm very pleased as county executive have given the authorization for us to move forward. The Board of Legislators, Margaret Kunze will speak in a second. She's joined by her colleague John Testa, who is the minority leader of the Board of Legislators, and they'll speak uh, both to the fighting the battle to protect the Miller House, which has gone on for a number of years, and now very happily, uh, before I end my fourth month in office, it's a battle that we've won. Just as uh, we ultimately won the greatest battle of all, our independence from Britain all those years ago. So I am next to introduce someone who I have forgotten who I'm supposed to introduce. Who comes next? <laughs> Our wonderful assemblyman, my good friend, the Honorable David Buckwald. Uh, thank you very much, George. This is an exciting day. Uh, well before I was an elected official, I was on the board of trustees of the White Plains Historical Society. And so local and, and state history is something I'm passionate about. More importantly, many uh, residents of Westchester are passionate about. And when they saw for years and years the Miller House uh, fall into disrepair, have a blue tarp over its roof to make sure it stopped leaking, uh, and, you know that basically sent a message of we were neglecting our history. And those who uh, don't recall the great history of the colonial era here in White Plains and North White Plains and Westchester County really are missing out because it was the Battle of White Plains that helped turn the tide of the Revolutionary War. Um, and it was on this very site that uh, George Washington helped uh, command our troops to uh, make sure the British weren't able to continue their advance northward and the uh, Revolutionary fighters were able to continue on uh, to another day and eventually to success and our country's independence. Uh, I'm really pleased that uh, New York State, through my office, is providing a $250,000 grant towards this preservation project, not just to rebuild the Miller House, but also make sure that there's, there's a visitor center on site. One of the things we're very committed to is making sure that 
The Miller House again becomes a site that children can come and visit, learn about the great history in their backyard. Uh, this wouldn't have been possible without a uh, great many uh, organizations and uh, friends of the Miller House, Daughters of Late Ladies Liberty, uh, but also a great partnership between multiple levels of government, local, county, and state. Um, many meetings over uh, many years. Uh, one person I know couldn't be here today, but uh, who uh, uh, began a lot of this fight was uh, John Nona, uh, then county legislator, now county attorney. He has an important meeting he's attending, but obviously uh, George Latimer has helped get us over the finish line. And Margaret Kunzio, who now holds that county legislative seat, is instrumental in making sure this issue is never forgotten. So um, just as a representative of North White Plains and North Castle and Northeastern Westchester, so pleased that folks from around our county will be able to come here. In a few short years, we'll have the before and after photos to compare, and you will see quite a difference. Thank you very much, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce Margaret Kunzio, county legislator. Thank you very much. Uh, growing up in North Castle, I remember when the Miller House was open for tours. And it's something that I feel very strongly about preserving. As an educator, I am very excited about the opportunity for children to come to the educational outbuilding that will be here. I also want to reiterate the importance of preserving our nation's history. This is an original site. We don't get many opportunities to preserve original sites and original artifacts. So I feel very strongly that we have this opportunity and we seized it. I want to thank everyone involved. It has been many years, many hours of meetings um, from the county, from the state, from the town, from all of the nonprofit organizations. This was not something that happened overnight. It was something I felt strong about when I first ran for office. I also want to thank the Parks Department. I want to thank the neighbors. I want to thank the Friends of the Miller House, Dahl, the County Executive, um, John Nona, and especially my colleagues, David Buckwald, and the County Board of Legislators. They unanimously approved the additional $700,000 in the capital budget to add to the original bond that John Nona had passed. I also want to thank the County Executive for any additional money that it will take to restore this to the uh, original site. Um, and of course, to David Buckwald, I am very excited to be here when schools will be able to come and bring students here to see the site and then to have the opportunity to see the artifacts and multimedia in the educational outbuilding that will be here. So I want to say thank you very much to everyone involved. This was a long fight. It is a great victory. And we have succeeded in saving an original piece of our nation's history. I'm now pleased to introduce Minority Leader John Testa from the Board of Legislators. Good morning everyone and thank you for having this here today and thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. I'm here for many many reasons but first and foremost is to congratulate everyone involved, the county executive who made sure this was done in a very timely way. Margaret Kunzio, who has been forceful on this since she took office and everyone else involved and the town and the historic preservation um, group that has been had their eye on the ball for many, many years. I'm here obviously as one of the people at the county board who has supported this effort from day one as a county legislator nine years ago, uh, getting the funds for this. But I'm here because for, since I was 12 years old, I've been a Revolutionary War reenactor. I have been doing historic preservation my entire life, just about as an adult. I've dedicated my entire adult life to preserving structures and, and promoting history and letting the residents of Westchester know and the Hudson Valley know that the creation, the cradle of our country began right here in Westchester and in the Hudson Valley. Without these sites to bring students and youngsters and people who are visiting. Tourism is going to be a big part of this. I know the, the Parks Department is excited about that. To bring people here to learn the history of our country and where it began. Began in Westchester, began in the Hudson Valley, and I'm just so excited to be able to be a part of it in my little way. But all the people behind me are the ones who made this happen, and I want to congratulate everyone involved and thank you for doing it. Thank you for doing it. Uh, I want to uh, now uh, pass this on to the town supervisor, Shirillo. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. A very exciting day. Uh, Eleven years ago, I was campaigning to run for office for councilman, 
and spent a lot of time walking in the hamlet of North White Plains, spent time at Miller Hill, and my first exposure to the historic nature of that little park and revolutionary soldiers that were stationed there. And knocking on one door in that neighborhood, talking to a gentleman who then ran back in the house and came out with a cannonball and was so proud of the fact that he had this cannonball that came with the house and would stay with the house. And that was my real live first experience of how passionate people in the town of North Castle were and specifically in the hamlet of, of North White Plains. And here we are today. And about 12 hours ago, last night, we spent three years working on our updating our comprehensive plan for the town. And in it, we made sure that we reaffirmed the town's position of keeping this house on this hallowed ground. And 12 hours later, here we are having this incredible press conference. So I couldn't ask for anything more. A lot of thanks have been given. I'll try not to do much overlap, but a lot of people behind me from the town help with that comprehensive plan. Our friends of the Miller House, our Miller House Committee, our Historical Society, Daughters of Liberty Legacy, so many different groups, so many different people were so instrumental in this. And now County Executive George Latimer within four months was able to bring it to this point. I, I have a great uh, uh, level of gratitude to County uh, Legislator uh, Margaret Kunzio for when she got in office, got that administration to the table immediately to start this process again. And you had mentioned John Nona. Uh, a big thanks goes to Mindy Barad, who's my executive assistant, who did the same thing for John. She was like a walking encyclopedia for me. And literally, as many of you know, I brought the binder that she had created to all of the meetings. And it helped, uh, and it was invaluable in getting this process forward. So I'm sure I left a lot of names uh, out, but there were so many people involved in this that made this a reality. And I can't express to you how exciting this is to look at this, have been looking at this house, then this, this repair for so long. And now, like many of you said, adults can now visit it. Our children can now visit. My kids have never been inside of this. And they've been living in town for over 20 years. They're finally going to get to be able to do that. So thanks all around. I can't name everybody, but so many thanks have gone into this. Uh, all the efforts, uh, Kathleen O'Connor, uh, parks, everything. and. It's just an exciting day. So with that, I am going to pass it on to Sharon Tombeck, who is our co-town historian, who has invested countless hours in this project and many others in the town. And Sharon, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great day. First, I, wanted, I want to say my predecessor, Dory Watson, was our town historian who worked feverishly to start the process of restoration. Um, this one's for you, Dory. I was recently asked what's so important about saving another old building. With so many pressing issues, maybe we should use the money for some of our other social and economic issues. Historic preservation matters for the same reason these causes matter. History reminds us that people who lived in the 1700s faced the same social and economic issues we face today. They faced more. They faced war on their doorsteps. Yet they prevailed. They created a new nation, inspiration for us. Great decisions concerning the future of our country were made more than 200 years ago in this house and thank you county executive george latimer for making another great decision today <laughs> this little farmhouse existed before our nation was formed it provides a unique hands-on history learning experience not available in a book or a classroom it engages our imagination. We can imagine the sounds of the cannons, <laughs> the cries of the wounded soldiers, the debates among the generals. This little farmhouse endured the ravages brought by the American Revolution, yet it survived another hundred years. But by the 1900s, Miller House, Washington's headquarters, needed restoration work. The White Plains chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution, saved it. 
and in 1917, Miller House became the property of the citizens of Westchester County. The DAR furnished and staffed Miller House, working with the county until the early 1990s. And now, after another 100 years, the house will receive some much needed restoration work. And by the way, it is absolutely true, George Washington slept here. <laughs> to the many people who pledged support, wrote letters, made telephone calls, gave speeches, sent emails, and posted on social media, thank you. To the newspaper and electronic media reporters who kept telling the story of Miller House, thank you. To the residents of Miller Hill, North White Plains, Daughters of Liberty's Legacy, Friends of Miller House, Washington's Headquarters, North Castle's Elijah Miller House Committee, North Castle's Landmark Preservation Committee, and the North Castle Historical Society, and to the very many I am unable to name, thank you. Special appreciation goes to the Honorable George Latimer, Assemblyman David Buckwald, County Legislator Margaret Kunzio, past County Legislator and current County Attorney John Nona. Thank you to North Castle Supervisor Michael Shalero, his assistant Mindy Berard, and to Councilman Barbara DiGiacinto, Steve D'Angelo, Jose Barra, and Barry Ryder, and to the past three North Castle Town Boards and Supervisors, Howard Arden, Bill Weaver, and Reese Berman, who also worked towards restoration of Miller House. For more than 10 years, not me, but many of us have begged, badgered, cajoled, criticized, insulted, berated, and nagged those in Westchester County government entrusted to oversee, preserve, and maintain Miller House. As the seasons passed into years and the series of tarpaulins continued, we despaired. It seemed that Miller House was effectively being talked to death. But now, restoration plans are underway. Soon the tarps will come off, the building and grounds will be restored, and visitors will again be able to touch, to feel, and experience America's early history. Visitors again will imagine the sounds of the cannon, the cries of the wounded, and the debates among generals. Thank you. We have with us uh, some folks representing some of the other organizations, Friends of Miller House and uh, uh, the Daughters who have been so involved. Would any of them like to make any comments? We have our commissioner, Kathy O'Connor. Kathy, would you like to share any thoughts? I think everything's been said. <laughs> <laughs> We're very pleased to have this. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. To come, come to the microphone, Kathy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I'm telling everybody to watch the bolts. Uh, Truly, on behalf of the Parks Department, this is again one of our jewels, and we're just thrilled that the county executive so quickly, shortly in office, said, do it, get it done, the money's there, let's see it. And the time frame for this is uh, shovels in the ground, hopefully by October of this year, and a completion in fall of 2019. I ran tours here in 1980, and uh, I'll be very happy. I don't really want to run the tours anymore, but I'd be very happy to be back. And it's one of our jewels. And we're very, very happy to be working with everybody behind me and all the people that have been mentioned already. We're very excited. So thank you very much. Let's open it up to any questions of our friends in the press, myself, or any of the other individuals here that you'd like to ask a question directed to one of us. We'd be happy to answer it. Well, I would say, Tony, what you're looking at in the main building, the, the official Miller House is going to be a complete renovation. Uh, certainly a new roof is going to be required. Uh, reinforcement of both the outer and the inner structures are necessary. Uh, you're going to see a, uh, a building created in addition to this one that would serve as a place for um, 
uh, seminars, education for students. Uh, there'll be modern bathrooms available, so with handicapped accessibility as part of this. Uh, there's also some plans that uh, will change the parking area here to allow an appropriate drive-through uh, by buses so school children can be dropped off. I think we've estimated about 12 parking spaces on site. Is that the number, Kathy, that we're working with in that vicinity? So that people, obviously, this is a very narrow and trafficked road so that there'll be off-site parking. There'll be landscaping done in a fashion to uh, bring it all together in an appropriate way, try to screen out as much as we can uh, of our a cooperative neighbor, but a neighbor nonetheless. Uh, and um, there's also something else we're doing but I forgot the root, what it is. What's the root cellar will be redone. The root cellar is over to the right of the building. And the root cellar is over behind my left shoulder. That will be redone. Um, people have always asked about the sycamore tree that's behind us. That's fabulous. Um, I think it's over 100 years old also, and we are not taking it down. In the uh, design of <clears throat> redoing the building, there will be an area so that it'll handle the roots. I don't think it's going to grow too much more, but we are not taking it down, so we're very excited about that. Sorry, one more question. Um, sure. Some of the rooms in the house <clears throat> are used for administration and you know maintenance activities. Right. Will those now become part of the museum, and those functions will move to this new building? Uh, both. To answer your question, yes, uh, it, it will be brought. Yes, it'll be brought back to the original. Uh, purposes. Um, as you might, if you go inside, you'll notice that a lot of the furniture is gone. It's being, uh, it's hermetically sealed so that it's preserved. <clears throat> There's a full dining room set that George Washington did sit at and, and do plans at. Um, so the bottom line is that we'll bring the building back to its original. They did not have administrative setups inside, um, but that will also be handled in the visitation building too. Um, we know for certain that George Washington was here for the Battle of White Plains. Um, the last battle during that uh, engagement was from atop Miller Hill, and the next day the British turned for whatever reason and went back to New York City. That was in the end of October 1776 through November 6th. However, Washington was still here until November 11th because we have correspondence dated White Plains. At that point in history, this was considered part of White Plains. Um, again in 1778 and again in 1781. Do you know why, why he chose this house? We do not know why he chose this house. The anecdote is that his second-in-command, General Charles Lee, was uh, riding the area looking for a defensible position, picked this house and told the general that, that this house, this location, was the optimum point. At that point, Mr. Miller had died fighting in the Revolution. Uh, he died in August of 1776. And um, Widow Miller accommodated, yes. And just to back up, the design for what's going to be done here uh, will be available so that uh, for print purposes or uh, electronic purposes, you'll be able to see what the, what the game plan looks like here. Any other questions of any of our uh, friends? If not, we thank you for being with us here. I'm sure there's wonderful B-roll shots here, and certainly our reenactors uh, are very much in keeping with the time, so we hope you'll have a chance to uh, include them in what you're doing. Thank you all very much. Congratulations.